Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, continuing our playthrough of EU4 with the Roomba. How are you doing? I am doing well. How are you? I'm doing not too bad. Not too bad. I'm looking forward to uh, getting the nobility back on track so we can exploit them again. <laughs> nice. Sounds okay. good. I like that. It's coming up, right? Should be soon, yeah. And you were getting excited about something during the break. What was that? Well, uh, we just had our truce expire with uh, with Denmark, and you remember how we were talking about how we wouldn't be able to attack Pomerania anymore because we're trying to be friends with the Emperor, Bohemia? Yeah. You notice who Denmark's allied to? Den uh, Denmark <laughs> is allied to Pomerania. Yeah, so if we attack Denmark, we're not really attacking Pomerania, we're attacking Denmark. So Bohemia won't be upset about it, they won't defend. If we take <sighs> land from the Empire, as long as we're allied to the Emperor... He's not even going to demand unlawful territory. He's just going to be like, yeah, well, you shouldn't have done that, but ah, it's okay, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So we need to decide now, like, are we going to just, like, straight up take the alliance with Bohemia? And I, I think we should, because it's a great opportunity right now to uh, to advance our interests. Okay. Uh, do we want to fabricate? I kind of want to, I mean... Yeah, I'd get one more claim on Pomerania, yeah. and we should ferry our army over there. It doesn't look like, well, we got 60% on the Methian separatists and 50% on the Ulstrians. About two and a half years, roughly. Well, could we suppress the Amethians? No. no. 15. Why is Pale so... If I click on Pale, is it going to tell me why they're so pissy? Yeah, they're pissy because we lowered autonomy. Remember, we lowered autonomy to... Yeah, I do, but I'm, I'm trying to see where the modifier is. It tells me that it's going to draw 15 unrest from that. Hover over so the 15.9. Un unrest, nine. yeah, okay. Break the Black Douglas, legitimacy. Positive stability, controlled by the clergy. Non-accepted culture, separatism. Why is separatism just 11.5 and autonomy decreased plus 10? Because we recently conquered it from England in the last war. Okay. Separatism starts off at 30 years, and the unrest from separatism is half of the number of years. Okay. So, that's where we, we ended up. Should we buy stability? No. No. No, no, no. Number one, no, generally speaking, if you have high stability, the game is kind of mean, and you are more likely to get stab hit events when you have high stability than when you have low stability. So if you're exceptionally high, like 2 or 3 stability, you're more likely to get bad events that are going to lower your stability. Number 2, it's incredibly expensive. To buy up to 3 stability would cost us 190 admin points. Yeah. We're not ahead of time on admin tech. Yeah. And admin admin is going to be useful for coring. It's it's no, no, no. no. Okay. I I generally wouldn't even buy stability unless I'm a negative. I would buy it to 0, but I would never even buy up to like positive 1 in most cases, barring like religious conversion situations. So yeah, um, I will unlawful the transports, okay. and we're if definitely we're going to war. I want this next military tech. Yeah, well, kind of. Depends. Does Denmark have it? I don't. Well, yes, they do. They have tech eight. So, yeah. Is uh, is Denmark's navy actually going to matter? Sorry, their army. Is it going to matter? Are we going to be able to just block them off because we've got superior naval power? Do we have naval power? I don't even know. Yeah. Some good questions. Uh, by the way, no building thing just expired, so now we can do something with that. Nice. I'm going to briefly... Denmark has zero heavies. They have six ships. Norway, their, sub their subject nation, has uh, zero heavies and only one ship. So we don't have very many heavies. We only have one heavy right now, but we have naval superiority as is. I would like to have more heavies, but... Um... Depends. What do you think? Do you want to buy up a couple more heavies just so that we can... No. Have an edge? Uh... I don't know. We're spending our money so aggressively. We're not... I, mean, I feel like it would be nice to have some economic prosperity for a little bit to do some development of uh, uh, like buildings and shit. Okay, but, yeah. But the, the primary building we would want to be building right now is shipyards. So that we could build more ships. So... We'd still be spending the money. I think we should build at least three more light ships right now to get our up to our force limit. Which I'm okay with light ships. I'm not so okay with heavy ships. They don't do anything when we're not warring. And like no one has a navy that we're gonna be warring right now that I care that much about, right? Like you exactly. just check the navies of the other two and like who cares? Like those are yep. minimal navies. They will also pull in Pomerania and Galray, which we should check on as well. I'll check on those real quick. So okay, you were so looking at the nobility. Nobility, yeah. They're currently at four percent loyalty. They're not real pleased about that because they don't have and if I mouse over that, it says because uh Low legitimacy is not a positive modifier, but they, unless they demand more territory or change towards 50%, uh, blah, blah. Where does it say that they need, where does it tell me how much land they need? I thought it told me that in here. 
Hover over the third one, third column. The nobility control 7.4% yeah. and they expect to control 15. Okay. So we'd like to get them to 15. Because then they're, then they're loyal, their uh, loyalty will start trending up, right? Yes. Okay. So we should do that. Yep. I would look at giving them marches, Hampshire, and Kent. Assuming that that won't put them above 80% influence. Marches, Hampshire, this is, and nobility. That's our newest okay. land. It has the highest autonomy. And, and uh, increase their loyalty by four, influence by six, so that will give, okay, that will put them at 62, and land percentage to 11. So we'll give them marches, seems good. Okay. okay. And we need to give them another 4%. Yeah. Looks like if you just give them Kent, then they'll be at 15.1% overall. Right. And then and their loyalty the immediately got to bump up, and now it's actually increasing. Yeah, but they're still going to be pissed for a while, but that's okay. As long as it's increasing over time, that's yeah. great. Now, the last, the, the, the last province, Hampshire, um, I would either consider lowering un lowering autonomy there and leaving it unassigned or giving it to the clergy or the burghers, one of the two. I would not leave uh, it just let's unassigned. Let's what we want to do with the burghers. I, I want to look if... Uh, so, giving them territory increases their influence and their uh, loyalty, right? Both, Yes. So I kind of wanted to demand admin from the clergy. That's coming up on that's six years away still. And the burgers was contribution, which is coming up in a year. So it might be nice to have a little bit more loyalty with the burgers. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be too big a deal. Thirty-seven. We want it under forty. So we gave yeah, if we gave them one province. I know you were saying earlier not to give, or rather, burgers. They prefer the ones with the trade modifiers. Yeah, and it isn't going to have that, but it would be nice to gain, take the money, right? Yeah, in this case, uh, I'm not sure. I, I would, I'm, I'm yeah, actually, power too. Interesting. I'm leaning towards giving them Hampshire to the clergy because you'll notice English separatists are actually pissed again already. They're back up to 20%. Kent, Hampshire, and Marches now have 10.9 unrest. Like they're... How are you seeing the clergy? What does it say the clergy do something special with uh, unrest? Uh, Go to like... As if you were going to give it to them. And then in okay. that tooltip, it says, uh, it will have the following effects in the province. Minimum province autonomy, 25. Local ta tax modifier is removed. Local unrest, minus 2. Local unrest, minus 2. That does not happen for the burger, so... No, the clergy okay. are the ones that lower unrest. All right, so it's just a function of the clergy. Okay. Basically, our legitimacy is trash right now. We lost one stability, and uh, that's the main reason... Tolerance also came down because tolerance is affected by legitimacy, so we lost a lot when we switched to this guy, so our unrest is looking really bleak. If we're going to go on an offensive war, we could probably handle the unrest as is, but when we win the war, we're going to have overextension and war exhaustion, so yeah. these rebellions are going to fire like right away, which makes me want the clergy to lower unrest. Alright. So, yeah, and I, that also pretty much outs the idea to lower autonomy, because... Just don't want to have any more rebellions right now. Okay. Okay, Pomerani has 20 ships, by the way. They actually have the most significant navy. That's funny. Yep. Tech 8, Tech 9, wow. Damn, just we were just about to get another claim out of that, too. Yep, Tech 8, and then Galray. Just trying to check, where the hell is Galray? There he is. He's on Tech 8. So everyone's on Tech 8, we're only on Tech five, uh, 7. Yeah, it's time to get Tech 8, I think. Yeah, the infantry fire would be nice. The only drawback is that every idea you take right now is going to reduce the next tech cost. So it's it'd be so nice to be able to power through all of these ideas in a row. But yeah, I don't. I, I mean I don't... the next idea is going to remove the tech cost. What does that mean? You remember from last session? Come on, every time, every every idea you have in that category reduces tech cost by I think one percent. Remember? Hover over the yeah. tech cost for military. Uh, I, okay. Ideas minus eight percent. We have four military ideas. Each one's reducing tech cost. Oh, that's where that number comes from. Let's yeah. See. Yeah, we talked about that. We did. I know we did. All right. Well, I remember it too. I know I do. But yeah, there's enough people that I, I think that having the tech would be more important anyway. Done. All right. We need another claim on Pomerania. I'm going to get that. Okay. We lost can't... both our spy networks. Got kicked out. 45 with Denmark. Yeah, it's going to take a long time. And then England's... We need 50, and we need a claim... Oh, I see you got the claim on Oxfordshire again. Nice. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, if we're going to go to war, we're pretty much ready to go to war right now. 
So you have to move so our, the war would be on Denmark, possibly, and pulling in Pomerania because they're allied. We have adequate ships. Our gold is a little pathetic for war right now, and our manpower is a little bad. It's like not a lot of manpower, but I mean, I guess do we have sight over there? We don't. I don't see a lot of Danish troops over there. Yeah, well, he's at peace right now. Did you end up deciding? Are we going to actually ally Bohemia? If we are, we should. We need to do that before we go to war. Uh, I'm fine with that. I'd like a shot at their. I'd like a shot at this. Um, taking over their stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, then offer them an alliance. Okay. So I will say, break royal ties. No. <laughs> uh, offer alliance. Okay. 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 Um. Let's see. Sweden has a truce, so we can't expect to call him in. France is now losing his war against the English, which is funny. I don't know how that turned around on him, but okay. Well, it's because he's fighting Castile, Aragon, Naples, Portugal. That's let's a go, lot let's of people. Let's some troops over, I guess. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. do it. Let's go to war. Yeah, most of them are already over there. <laughs> okay, I don't think we... Uh, do we even need to have our forts on? Probably not. If anyone actually way, succeeds, go back to fabricating on England. Yes, that sounds good. And then the other diplomat probably keep free until yeah. we declare. Okay, if we are going to do this, we're going to end up having none of our navy protecting trade, which is unfortunate because we want to have all of our navy together to have naval superiority. We need two more months for the final, the the one heavy that we have to actually get repaired. Okay, so we'll wait on that. Yeah, sounds good. Burgundy just became the papal controller again. Unfortunate for us. So what that means wasn't now? That just wasn't that just uh, Bohemia? Uh, no, not the papal. You're, you're thinking of the emperor. Talk about yeah, papal controller. Okay. So because so basically what happened is whoever was the emperor before, sorry, not the emperor. Whoever was the papal controller before, their ruler died, and then a new person got cho chosen, and Burgundy just happened to get it twice in a row. Because of that, if you go to the Papal Influence screen, you'll notice we now have a 0% chance. Any invested influence we spent is now gone, and if you want a chance at it again, you got to click it. you got to spend five more points again. It's annoying. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just do it anyway, just because I want to see I just a chance. A chance at it would be interesting for, for your own experience and benefit. Okay. Um, let's see. I pop think... Up. Okay. Um, it's a nobility-related pop-up. Oh, goody. And we have gold as a sign of nobility. We can gain 96 ducats right for war, which would be nice. Nobility loses 10 loyalty, which is bad. And the burger state gains 10 loyalty. Um, okay. Or well, the nobility cannot be bought, in which case the nobility gains 10 loyalty. We gain one stability, which sounds pretty fucking amazing. And the burger's estate loses 10 loyalty, and they're currently at 47. So they will be disloyal, but they'll be very, only very slightly disloyal. Seems fine to me. I would definitely take that free stability. That's worth a lot of admin. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Thanks. Okay. okay. Our heavy is repaired. I'm sending the entire navy over to Sealand. You're not worried about this 70% separatist over here? I don't like pale? it, but but no, not really worried about it. We have a fort in pale. Yeah, it's going to take a long time to siege it down. Yeah, I, and we can't really stop it. I mean, we could we could delay the war if you want to... gain 20 prestige for free. Nice. Yeah, I mean, we, we, for a war. we could delay the war... In, in favor of trying to put down that rebellion, but there's no way of knowing exactly when it's going to happen. So I'm just going to turn the no. fort on, and then we'll just hope that it doesn't. And if it yeah, does, war. whatever. You ready to war? Uh, yeah, so how do you feel about our leaders? You like the leader that we have? Uh, let's go take a look at who our leader is in the second army. Donald yes. Alexander, he's pretty good. I do like him. He's pretty good. Yep. Uh, do you want to have an admiral? Uh, are we going to be fighting some big stuff? Maybe. Okay. Uh, let, me go see, let me see the admiral ship. Thing on uh, the burgers. What does that actually do? Now would uh, be now would be a good time to take Diplotech eight so we get that naval morale bump. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm good with that. We we're, I was looking at that. We're getting close to that limit, anyways. Not super close, but okay. So that would be technology. You wanted the naval limit, apparently. Not the yeah, naval limit. Naval morale is what I want. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, morale will affect how quickly our ships lower the enemy's morale, because max morale determines. And also, you'll notice we actually just got the ahead-of-time bonus, which is 20% more trade efficiency. Which is really, really good. 
Where do I see that? Uh, when you're looking at the military screen, you'll notice for Diplotech, uh, to the top right of the Diplotech section, there's a plus 25% in red. Mm -hmm. Hovering over that shows we're three years ahead of time on Diplo, giving mm -hmm. us plus 20%. And yeah. minus yearly corruption, which is actually good right now. Yeah. Although, well, are we paying for corruption right now? No. We're, corruption got down to zero, so we're losing nothing. Okay. If anything, it would have been nice to... Earlier. Yeah. Earlier. Earlier. yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't know it would do that for us. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I don't know that is there's the much else. Is a building? Yes. Okay. Yep, I would uh, I would just keep the money that we have stockpiled. I wouldn't worry about turning on any other forts. I'm not too worried about the other rebellions. The Austrians are next to Pale, so. And you are considering an admiral. Eh, I don't think we need it, but it's only diplo points, and uh, we're ahead of time on that, and it wouldn't be horrible to have a few extra pips for combat. I would like it. You've, uh... Okay, you lost us some heavies recently. So it would be nice to get some, some <laughs> okay. to offset that. Well then, let's see. Uh, let's see your luck. Yeah, roll an admiral. Oh, he's amazing. Uh, a two zero one. Not that great, but hey, it's better than nothing. We'll put Douglas <laughs> Keith in charge. How's the fire phase compared to the shock phase in naval combat? They are functionally identical. Okay, so all right. They still go fire first, then shock, but they don't have any, any, any variation at all whatsoever. Okay. Okay, so well, let's uh, let's do this war. Okay, uh, it's uh. Look at that, Scane, mothballed fort. <laughs> I can see that by going. Oh, geez. So high. Denmark has a fort and it's mothballed. That's hilarious. Let's check and see if uh, Norway has one fort and he's got it on. Pomerania has one fort, but it's a capital. And Galray has a single capital fort. Okay, yeah. So we can just. Are you worried about our manpower? At all? Not really, no. Because we've got trade ideas. We've got the income to support mercs if we need them. Oh, that's true. Okay. So yeah, uh, what I would do then in this case, we have naval superiority. Let's wait. Uh, let's wait till June the first. I want to make okay. sure that 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 last that heavy needs to join up with the navy. Get one more month of repairs in. Keep the keep the diplomat free to declare on the first. And then you're going to take one infantry to Scane, and then you're going to take the rest and go smash his army. And we'll see if we can stack wipe it real easy by giving him. Uh, a, like, pseudo-retreat path. Okay, go ahead. Declare, declare the war if you're ready. Um, okay. Just make sure so let me right-click on Denmark. I'm going to declare war. Uh, we're not going in... We're not pulling in... Alright, so... I, we're not asking any of our allies to join us, right? Nope. Sweden okay. can't, because he's got a truce. Bohemia has just recently become friends with us. And France is, uh... He's losing and the war. I don't want to... So... Okay, this is the... There's another one that we're looking at, so... No, we're taking its conquest. Uh, I guess I could declare the war goal. I'm going to declare Finn, I think. Actually, it'd be easier to hold Skane, right? Yeah, I'll make it Skane. Okay, so we'll make it Skane. And I thought there was some way we could declare if the enemy... Will... Okay, what is the co-belligerent stuff? So I'm looking at this again. I'm just looking at... Uh, they will not be able to call their own allies, but it will make it be twice as expensive to take their provinces. Why would I want to make it twice as expensive to take their provinces? Okay, so if you don't co-belligerent Pomerania, and we want to take land from him, then each province you take, negotiating, is going to cost twice as much. If you do co-belligerent them, then that penalty is removed, but they will be allowed to call their allies as well. Okay, so let me go look at his allies. He has allies Denmark, East Frisia, which was just a one tile, I think. One province minor, yeah. Yeah, and then Verden. Where's Verden? Let's go find Verden. Verden, where are you? Show me where you are. Reveal yourself, Verden! No, it <laughs> it's the yellow guy off the Hologolan Blight. He's got two provinces. He's got uh, 20 development. He's he's going to have an army. He'll have at least a 5 or 6 stack. I'm not that scared about a 5 or 6 stack. Well, it's a lot of little 1 province miners to bring in. Uh, let's see. 1 province miners. Here's what I would recommend. Um, let's see. How much... Let's check the war score cost of the provinces we're going to take from Denmark. Skane is 21%. Okay, we got a claim on Finn. Click on the province itself, Skane. Okay. Right. And then in the bottom, like lower third of the uh, province interface, you can see the cross swords with the star, 21%. Okay. Okay, Finn is uh, 14, so we're at like 35. Other okay. claims, we've got Kolding is 9, so that's like... Uh, I've lost count again. 21... 35, 44, Slevsig is 
58. And then Holston is 58 plus 13, so 60, 70, 70 71? 71 percent more score? So we're gonna spend 71 more score just taking land off of Denmark. Probably the easiest solution would be just to, to negotiate a separate piece with Pomerania. We'll pay a few Diplo points to take their land with a separate piece, but we can take those two provinces without allowing him to be a co-belligerent. Okay. And that That's way we just I have... Here, that we could get the one province that had the access to the southern yeah. Baltic Sea. Yeah, if there was room in the war score negotiation with Denmark to take Pomerania's land directly, we could avoid spending Diplo points. But there isn't, because we're going to spend 71 some war score on Denmark directly. So, yeah. It's a lot so of land. leave those boxes unchecked then, because that means they're not yeah. co Mm-hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Alright. Do it! Alright. Make sure you send your one troop over to Skane to take that mothballed fort. Okay. Uh, well, you gotta, you gotta wait like a day so our navy can go out there and obliterate that little one ship. We just failed our mission because we were trying to recover manpower. It's totally not, totally fine. Rival of arrival, definitely the best mission. Okay, yeah, definitely, definitely. Alright, what does it do for us? Diplo points. It goes up in Diplo points. Oh, okay. So we have to rival... We have to make Castile like us. Okay, that's fucking easy. Right. Well, it'll be a little tricky. We have already improved relations by 55, and he's at 46, so that we can get to 90 easily, but we can't get to 100. We'll, we'll take the mission and try. Okay. Were we doing favors with France for any of this? We are in favors over time. No, 50. I know. I'm saying, weren't we? I thought there was. I thought we were doing something with France here. We we're going to pull them into a war. That was back when Austria was the emperor. It's, it's all okay. changed now. Okay. We can't right. expect France to join. Plus, he's still losing his war. Okay. So, okay. Well, we got to take a break here. But next episode, you're going to go win this war for us, right? Uh, I'm going to lose some troops and see how that works for us. All right. Sounds good. See you, see in a you bit. soon.